This is, this is, this is. All right, welcome to a brand new episode of the My Career Podcast. Um, it's been a good couple weeks. It's been really good. I just went to Reno, as you're hearing this, but I'm recording this right before I go to Reno. So I don't know if I want a bunch of money, whatever, but I <laughs> I went there for Goldfinger uh, to play bass, not to gamble. But I'm thinking maybe I should gamble. Maybe I should gamble. Hmm. Thinking about it still. Uh, depends on what's up. I got a few things to do, um, so... One of those is, is, you know, I'm still going over some of the songs and making that work, but I'm pretty much ready to go. I just like to really over-prepare for Goldfinger and just make sure I know what I'm doing. Um, I do the same for MXPX. You know, we practice before we do, do shows. And um, Anyway, it's been a good couple of weeks. So on my wife's birthday, we went out to this place, Olala Bakery, and um, Olala Bay Bakery. And we were just going to get some coffee, hang out. And on the way to go there, she was telling the kids, there's a book that's based here in this town, Olala, called Starvation Heights. And it's about this lady, Debbie Hazard, something like that. And she opened a sanatorium where you could send your mentally crazy person mentally whatever and people would send her their family members and instead of fixing them and helping them she starved them starvation heights whoo it's just it's a wild story i didn't read the book but hearing some of the stories like she she had a, a curiosity with medicine and so she would put the emaciated bodies on this ironing board, an old wood ironing board, and do autopsies. Just wild. And so there's a museum right next to to the bakery that's dedicated to true crime and the Starvation Heights uh, book and story. Anyway, that leads, leads me to we get our stuff, we're, we get food and we're out on the on the deck eating. Holly, myself, the family, uh, the kids, two 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 of my kids. I only have two kids. Um, <laughs> that was weird. Um, <laughs> and we're sitting there, and as we as we had sat down, you know, after getting up a few times to get the food, and um, Holly had overheard, and I overheard the same thing. I just didn't register the same way it did to her. She overheard uh, a guy telling this family, and they were sitting down next to us at a table and he's like and then they found her body on rattlesnake ridge and holly's listening she's like hmm that really rings a bell like uh just that the idea that this guy is telling a story about true crime or something like that and um sure enough she's like is that greg olson and she looks up what Greg Olson looks like. She's like, it kind of looks like him. I mean, it's kind of hard to tell. Um, and sure enough, that's the author of Starvation Heights, Greg Olson. And he goes inside and she's like, uh, I'm like, why don't you go talk to him? Why don't you go get his autograph? Have him sign a book. She's like, ah, no, it's okay. And I'm like, all right, I go in there and, and I see he's behind the counter. I'm like, wait, what? He's behind the counter. Okay. Maybe he, works here or owns the place so i go back out i go he's behind the counter he's talking to an employee so maybe he's here all the time and and so anyway i we go i go back in there holly comes with me and she's showing me the phone and she's like is that him and i'm like i think so i mean let's just ask and so uh we start talking i start talking to him about something like a book or something and then i go are you craig and he goes yeah, I'm Greg. And we're like, oh my gosh, my wife, she's a huge fan. She's read a couple of your books. She would, it's her birthday. Can, if I buy a couple of books, would you sign them? And so sure enough, we just start talking and he's like, yes, of course. And then Holly comes in and she's like talking to him about this other book that she read where she was reading the book and didn't realize it took place in West Bremerton and that she knew somebody in the book. 
um, pretty wild. And, and, and nothing happened. Um, that person is still alive. So it's, it, it, it is a murder mystery, not a murder mystery, uh, but this isn't about that book. He's written a ton of books. Some are fiction. Some are, are true crime nonfiction. And um, he's just got this place in Olala that's just, it's really cool. It's got uh, Debbie, uh, I think it's Debbie Hazard, uh, something Hazard, uh, Dr. Hazard uh, on one of the bathroom doors and then another guy from another you know story on, a, on the bathroom door. And it's just really cool looking. Um, they got some cool stuff. They got bo- all his books are in there, or at least a bunch of them. Um, and the food was great. Uh, they got drinks, food, all that. And um, we had a we had um, the kids had bagel, like a ham and cheese bagel, you know, something like that. But then um, Holly and I split this giant uh, lox and cream cheese, and it was really immaculate. It had all this stuff piled on it. And, it was it was it was good. I don't normally eat lox and bagels, but now and again, you kind of like if you're at a nice place, you go, okay, it's going to be good here, and it was it was good. But um, they don't even make it there. They they have artisanal people making their stuff, and they bring it in each morning. So anyway, the guy does own the place, and uh, they bought it in 2020, and renovated it and made it into what it is now. And and right next door is his little museum. It's very tiny. It's like it's like a little beach house, but a closet, like a like a like a one room museum when you walk in. Um, but worth a worth a, ch- a check out if you're in in uh, anywhere in Western Washington, you know. But in the Bremerton Port Orchard or Tacoma, Gig Harbor area, it's right between Gig Harbor and Port Orchard, and um, it's right off the freeway there. Very cool spot. It's on the water, and. Uh, it was just it was cool to have something like that happen and I could I could imagine um I could imagine how people are bummed out when when artists are grumpy and so I always try to be on my best behavior when when I'm in public and people notice me and, and even when I'm not noticed I try to be on my best behavior in public treating anybody I come in contact with with uh dignity and respect and and a polite attitude and manner so, um, you know, today I went to see my, my daughter at, at a talent show and it, it was like a, a local type talent show where anybody that signs up, you know, it's an age group from probably four to four to 13. And, um, so it ranged from little kids doing a few things and, and, but I was just watching the stage show and just going, man, they really could, they could have a better PA, they could they could not put the microphone in front of the speaker. And then so when, when the lady goes to turn it on, it just goes, and she's like turning it down instead of moving the microphone. And I'm just like, serenity now, serenity now. Like, it's okay. It's just a kid's thing. It's, it's all about learning. It's all about experiencing things that go wrong, to be honest. And, and so it's great for my daughter to have the chops and to have the, the, the experiences of working with less than stellar equipment less than stellar stage setups so she can make those decisions on the spot what she thinks would be the best move so the setup was one speaker one like giant like tall bose speaker but really thin like this thin and then it had like it's speak it's a brain and uh there was a microphone and then there was two wireless lapel mics you could put like a like clip it on so there was no plug in for her guitar or anything. So she had to make a decision on, okay, do you want to go with just one mic in between your vocal and the, the guitar or maybe the lapel mic. And then the, 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 the regular microphone can just be pointed down at the guitar. So that was my thinking as I'm watching and she was like in another area while, while we were waiting because she was actually last. She was last, very dead last. She, this is her second year doing it, and they knew she was going to be decent. So she, can she go last? Yeah, of course. So anyway, uh, I was just thinking, like, I hope she uses a lapel mic because that was actually louder than anything people were doing on the regular mic. So I knew if she had 
the microphone in between, it was going to be even quieter because you wouldn't, weren't going to be up on it like this. And that's a problem because you couldn't even hear people as it was. So, you know, people were getting through it. These kids were, some of them were pretty good. And um, one of them that, that actually had a mic was really good. She, she did well. Uh, maybe it was a lapel. I can't remember exactly, but she did like a show tune and it was, she, she sang great. Um, had, had a little bit of choreography and um, anyway, so it, it was like, okay, so not everybody's terrible. That's, that's at least a good thing. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, anyway, if we don't have to keep going on about this, I just thought it was, it was an exercise in trying to keep my mouth shut and not try to like go over there and fix things. Cause I mean, it's just at one point <clears throat> during this girl's performance of Les Miserables, um, it's uh, the one you've heard, uh, you've probably heard this song, but She's doing this song, and she's like a show tune kind of thing, or a, you know, an operatic type song. And right behind her, this guy on his bike with a, an orange vest. So he kind of looked like a city worker, but I don't know if he just had an orange vest for safety. Goes right behind her, just rides his bike on the stage because the stage is, you know, you can walk from one. It's not up elevated at all. It's just a gazebo with a covering. So. But you can see that there's something happening here. And the guy just rides right through the thing. And I'm just like, what the? I, I just can't believe it. I'm just like, I feel like I'm a, a dad in the stand. And it wasn't my kid that he did that to. I was like, I'd be, I'd be pretty bummed if, he, if my kid had that happen you know, during my kid's performance. So crazy times, crazy times. <laughs> Let's get to your voicemails, all right? Um, if you want to leave a voicemail, I'd appreciate it. I love uh, being able to hear from you, the audience, hear what you have to say, hear your stories, hear your questions. Um, it always gets me going. It, it jogs my mind. It jogs my memory. It makes me think of things that I never would have thought of, um, you know, on a, on a regular day-to-day -day basis. So the number is 360-830-6660. Leave me a voicemail. You got a couple minutes, so try to plan out what you're going to say. Every now and again, you can tell somebody's reading what they wrote, uh, which is cool too. Like honestly, if if that's what you need to stay on point, I back it. I love it. So we'd love to hear from you. You choose the topic. It could be about anything. Uh, I'll do my best answering. All right, let's get to it. Here we go. Hey, Mike, Matthew here. I just want to say uh, great job uh, de-escalating uh, in that last podcast. Um, as you know, we live in a pretty violent society. You've toured, I'm sure, in Canada and Europe and have seen the difference. And de-escalating is uh, very important. So uh, nice work. Um, I just saw you in Portland. It was awesome. I just want to say kudos to... Uh, uh, not making a situation uh, very violent and sharing that uh, with all of us on your podcast. Great job, Ciao. Thanks, Matthew. I appreciate that. That that that's good to hear. You only hear about the, when it when it really goes bad. A lot of times, you know, you don't hear about the less sensational stories, which is mine, where I gave him a beer and let him have my jacket you know <laughs> so so uh yeah i feel good about it uh, after all these weeks i feel like no i'm kind of glad that i didn't beat him up i'm glad that i didn't kill him shoot him stab him beat him whatever call the cops um and in this situation because it doesn't happen all the time maybe that's my privilege and if it happened every night every morning every whenever Every week, even I'd probably start changing my attitude, and I'd, I'd start beating people up. But let's hope that I don't have to become that person and and be jaded and and disgruntled. But uh, it does happen, and that is the real world. Some of these business owners in in really poor areas of not even poor areas of towns, but town areas of towns that have have gotten overrun by homelessness and drug use and criminality and people are bashing in windows because they're mentally gone somewhere else it's wild 
Thanks for the call, Matthew. I appreciate it. All right, what's next? Hey, Mike. It's Garrett here in Kentucky again. I, uh, you know, had a, hopefully I can get to, get this in in two, uh, two, two things into three minutes. Sure, yes. Okay, so, uh, last time I called in, I was having like sort of a freak out moment thinking about, you know, music not being a thing, bands not being a thing anymore, uh, and, you know, the rise, uh, and domination of the, uh, tribute bands and not when I'm, well, it happened and I knew it was going to happen. And at my band, Semper Vivi, got asked to open up for the Red Knot Chili Peppers. So, uh, you know, uh. we talked about it and he said, let's do it. So we're going to be playing in front of a pretty big crowd, Manchester Music Hall here in Lexington, Kentucky, September 12th. That sounds like a good time if you want to go see uh, the Red Ho- the Red Knot Chili Peppers. The Red Knot. And see us in original punk rock band opening up uh so yeah manchester music hall september 12th like in kentucky anyway so the 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 i had a follow-up about your naked guy in your house okay. story uh, i'm gonna tell you since uh uh you know you gave him a jacket if i remember that right um about the time that i i, I took a jacket or i took a coat from a homeless guy so uh one time my church was doing a uh like a worship service and feeding the homeless and stuff uh, at this place. And it was a really cold day. And, you know, I got there, you know, before anybody else did. And I just threw my coat over in the corner. Didn't think about it until, you know, we were packing everything up. And, uh, you know, I was kind of panicking. You know, I couldn't find my coat anywhere. And, and uh, you know, my friends and I are just kind of looking around. We're looking and then I turn and I see there's a guy uh, just looking just as perplexed and maybe a little scared, maybe a little sad, uh, because he's wearing my coat over another coat, and it's obvious that my coat is too small for him. Uh, and it was just super, super, super awkward. And, uh, yeah, so I was like, hey, man, I'm sorry. That's my only coat. I, I really need it. So... Uh, didn't think anything about that other than it was funny. I took a coat from a homeless guy, brought it home and hung it up on my wife. You know, I told my wife the story. I thought it was hilarious and she's like freaking out. She's like, dude, you, you just put that back where it goes in the, in the closet. So yeah, another example of we're dudes, we do dumb stuff and our wives are smart. There you go. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I guess it depends on how important that jacket is, right? Is that jacket like your favorite jacket or is it your only jacket because you just haven't gone to the store to get a new jacket? Like that's that's what I want to know. Um, no judgment. I mean, you, you you have the right to keep your jacket. You don't have to give your jacket away to the guy that thought it was up for grabs. But if it wasn't that important of a jacket, it would have been kind of cool to to give it to him and if it was important that's kind of even better that's like more of a a a saint status thing to do not to make you feel guilty no you can do no wrong derek you can do no wrong and and you know i second guess how i do things and how i say things to people sometimes i'm like man i shouldn't have said it that way i should have inflected it differently and been more nonchalant about it and like going you know back in time and we can't take it back. We can just, we can just, you know, forgive ourselves and move on. But anyway, great story. Um, something about jackets, you know, jackets can be passed around, used, and uh, it's not like underwear. It's not the same. Not the same thing. All right, let's let's move on. Thanks for the call. And uh, you know, to comment real quick on your your band, congratulations. Go, anybody go see their band, Semper Vivi. I uh, haven't heard it, but um, I've definitely heard of it and heard you guys. Um, actually, maybe, have you been on Music Monday? I'll have to review that. I'm sorry if I'm forgetting. Um, I definitely know, know of your band, though. And, you know, the reason why tribute bands do so well is because they're using a brand that's been known, you know, and marketed for years and years and years. Hit songs. They're playing songs that people know and have an attachment to. So... 
don't feel too bad for yourself because you don't have the same attachments, not only to your song, but to the name, to the likenesses, all these things. After a while, you know, you see the poking at your punk, you see, you see us on stage, you see, you, you kind of, it's been, it's been over and over and over in your head, you know, when you see us. Um, I'm just using MXPX as an example, but these bands that, that have spent years and years touring and putting out albums, that's why tribute bands work and, be, can, and can become big because they're using, you know, people are, the, the general public are very simple, very simple. They just want to, they want to forget about work. They want to forget about politics. They want to just have a good time, blow off a little steam. And sometimes your favorite songs you don't you don't have the time to go to the big city and go see the big band or whatever. You can just go see their songs at the local bar. That's my two cents. All right. Let's let's uh let's see what's next. Hey Mike, missed the chance to see you in Bremerton. But me and my wife Kat are excited to be able to see you at the grand opening of Airport Tavern. Well, reopening of air bigger, better airport tavern. Congrats, Dano. Love the podcast, love the music, love all the team MXPX. And if you're ever on Pack Avenue Tacoma at University of Washington, feel free to grab a Sammy on me. Curtis out. Nice. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. All right, Curtis. Um, Airport Tavern. That was fun. Um, I, th- I think I talked about it last podcast. Maybe I didn't. That was Music Monday last podcast. If you haven't already heard that and you want to hear some of the community, some of what people are doing that listen to the podcast. Music Mondays are, are it. Um, all right, Curtis, thanks for the call. Um, if I ever find myself at your place in University of Washington, or uh, what you said, <laughs> what I will, uh, Pacific, is it PLU or is it is it a different one? Um, I'll, I'll re-listen to your, let me, let's re-listen. The podcast, love the music, love all the team MXPX. And if you're ever on Pack Avenue Tacoma at University of Washington, feel free to grab a Sammy on me. Curtis out. Pack Ave. Okay, got you, got you, got you. All right, Pack Ave at the University of Washington. I've never been there, I don't think. But uh cool. I appreciate it. Thank you. What's up, homeboy? It's Anthony, dude. Again, I called about the top 10 movies and hot sauces, nice. dude. Your movies are definitely great fucking picks. Uh, thanks for answering the questions, man. Uh, as far as hot sauces go, dude, I never tried those, but I'll definitely look into it. But try Mary Sharp's. They're fucking badass, dude. They got like fucking six different flavors. They're gnarly, dude. Um... But I'm going to dub myself, dude, as the top five guy, dude. I'm just going to call you and ask you top five shit. Fucking gnarly, bro. So, what's your top five favorite foods? Nachos need to be on the list. Or you need to reevaluate your life, bro. (laughs) I'm just joking, dude. But, uh... Okay. Yeah, I just hope things are going great for you. And uh, I was wondering, dude, if you had one band to cover your first album, what band would you have cover it, and why would you have cover it? God bless, like always. You take care, buddy. Whoa, with the question on the end. What's up, Anthony? Thanks for the top five guy, Anthony. Thanks for calling in. I love that. You're going to have to keep it rolling for the people. They're going to demand their top five and their top five guy. What band do, you, do I want to cover? To cover. Okay. I'll do that first. Cover MXPX. And then I'll get into my top five. Um, uh, okay. Okay. What band would I want to cover MXPX? Um, well, <laughs> I don't know what song, but 
Joe Strummer, The Clash, would love to hear them do an MHPX song. I know it's ridiculous to even say. Those words just came out of my mouth. But um, if it's somebody still alive, Green Day, Taylor Swift, uh, Rancid would be cool to hear. No Effects would be cool to hear their version. I don't know if I can just pick one. Um, Justin Bieber doing an MXPX song would be awesome. Those are a couple. Um, Dead Milkman, maybe, you know, because uh, we covered one of their songs. Top five guy wants to know my top five favorite foods. So let me just hit you. This is going to be off the dome. So if, you know, my choices might change over time, you know, on any given day. But I'm going to go with nachos. And we used to make a thing called bus nachos on the bus, you know, touring around. There's not a whole lot of choices you can eat when you want a quick meal. There's a lot of microwave dinners and things like that. But I like fresh food, so I, I just get chips and, you know, shredded cheese, throw that on a, on a plate, and go to town. Put it in the microwave. That's bus nachos. You can add more things to it, but you don't have to. Um, so that's my, that's my first thing. And, and those aren't the best nachos, by the way. Bus nachos aren't the best nachos. Um, there's a lot of great places that have nachos in the world. I can't tell you where those are, but uh, locally, I'd say the garage has a decent nacho for white people, nacho bar food. Great nachos, huge um, at the garage in Bremerton. But aside from that, yeah, I mean, a lot of places have great nachos. So I like homemade nachos. You just pile in a bunch of stuff and throw it in the oven, and I love it. Uh, lasagna, number four. Lasagna, Italian food, pasta, I love it. Who doesn't love it? But lasagna is kind of my go-to if I'm going to order from Spiro's. Um, that's where I used to work back in the day. The only thing we ever couldn't have for free was lasagna. So I always, to me, it's like, it's like a, a, you, you have wealth in your life if you're eating lasagna because you can afford to eat it. So that's why now as an adult, I always order lasagna when I, when we order takeout from Spiro's or when we just go there, sometimes I'll have something else like a, a sub or something. If I, if I'm just wanting something really easy to carry along, but if it's coming to my house, I'm going to have leftovers and things like that. I'm having lasagna. That's me. My daughter's the same way. She's having lasagna, but back in the day, I'd always, eat, I would always make, uh, I'd always make a sandwich, like a sub from there. Just slap something together it was always really nice but lasagna i got a soft spot for it my 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 choices so far are, are rooted in life they're rooted in experiences and i think that's what food is for a lot of people is is we can tie it to experiences just like we tie music and songs to our experiences in our lives um in the same way food can be that so next up i'm going to say thai thai food especially uh, a Thai chicken satay with uh, with white rice or you know whatever the rice is the white rice the chi Thai chicken satay with peanut sauce that dish was something that I also made on the bus all the time during warp tour and I would make it without chicken just because it was easier I would get peanut sauce from the store I would get rice from the store and I would just microwave the rice microwave the sauce put it together there you go it's a ghetto meal i do not recommend doing that very often because it's very fattening and there's not a lot of health benefits to it you got to really lean on the the chicken for that and i didn't have any chicken but there's a dish called bang bang chicken and shrimp at the uh <laughs> at the cheesecake factory and and i know people are like what that's not even thai food i'm not saying that's the best thai food ever but like Ever since I had that dish, I've always loved peanut sauce. And and we discovered Thai food from Steve Kravak when we recorded Life in General. We were in Hollywood, California. We were trying all these new restaurants that they didn't have or we didn't know about. Maybe they had them in Bremerton. We just didn't know about them yet. And so Thai food was one of those things we discovered. And uh, it really opened up a whole new world. Some of my other favorite dishes, you know, like Tom Kakai soup. It's this like really heavy coconut-based soup. I really love uh, 
curry, any kind of curry. Uh, there's like the green curry, the yellow curry. There's, um, you know, you have it with rice. You can have it with beef, chicken, tofu, whatever you choose, uh, even shrimp. Um, there's pad thai. You can't go wrong with pad thai when you're talking Thai food. So uh, that's my th- that's my third. Um, my second favorite food, my top two favorite food, has got to be ice cream. And right now, it's that that's in in the form of of uh, shakes. You know, protein shakes. I, I actually eat a banana shake. Um, Tom taught me this actually, and I, and I've I've asked him about this quite a few times. Like, what are you what are you eating? What are you doing? And he'll be like, I have a shake for breakfast. And so I started eating shakes. I've always loved sweets. I've always loved ice cream, um, cookies, and things like that. I'll, I'll eat all day, but I prefer ice cream. And and if it's like a real ice cream, like and if it's like a healthy or even unhealthy, what I mean by healthy is not pro- super processed. If it's like a good quality food, then it's good for me. Then I'm okay with it. And I don't eat it all the time, but I love these shakes because it doesn't have ice cream in it. it just tastes like it does. And what I put is I put mostly milk, but it, it goes, it goes frozen bananas. Boom. It goes at, abstract vanilla extract vanilla vanilla extract a little spoonful of that and then from there you put two two cups of milk but i actually put i just i don't measure i just put milk and then i put a little bit of chocolate milk just and then i'll put in my protein powder that's chocolate so it's like a chocolate shake with no ice cream and it's probably with the chocolate milk in there, like I could clean up the, the the calories and the sugars a little bit if I wanted to, but I'm eating that, and then I'll have um, what what I'm gonna come to, which is my number one food. My number one food right now has been for a long time. You guessed it, breakfast burritos, and that's where the hot sauce comes in as well. Is I'm always eating hot sauce with my breakfast burritos. And that's where I'm always eating it. And every morning I'll make a shake. I'll make it, you know, I'll have it in a glass like this big. So it's not like a giant shake like you would have like at a, a, a restaurant. But, I, but I, I mix it up and I make myself the shake, but then I make the kids shakes. And so they get a shake. They're constantly eating in the morning. So that's, that's my, you know, routine is I'll make them a shake. And, and then I'll go from there and make like one burrito or sometimes two so you know sometimes the burritos are kind of small and i'm hungry and i'll just go that's my meal for the day until dinner and so i'll just go for the rest of the day and then i'll eat dinner when i get home but breakfast burritos is my number one food love it there's a lot of different types of breakfast burritos i like but mainly i like it simple i like eggs scrambled cooked with uh breakfast sausage if you can get the natural kind from jimmy dean I recommend that or anything more natural like that. If it's a, a small company, a small farm, even better. But if you have to go manufactured, try to get the natural sausage. Um, and then eggs, same deal. Go as natural as you can, organic. In Washington State, all the eggs have to be organic, so you don't have to worry about looking for organic in Washington. Uh, but eggs scrambled with green diced green peppers and the sausage, you cook up the sausage first, actually, and then you you scramble the eggs, and then you pour it all in and and put it together, and then that cooks. And then I do my tortillas are raw, raw tortillas that have to be refrigerated. Put those in. Tortilla Land are usually pretty good if you can find those, but there's a few different companies that make good raw tortillas, and they're flour. So put that together, roll it up, and I'm not doing this every morning. I'm actually doing this. My wife's doing this, but sometimes when I'm living by myself i do it uh but she started making these burritos like burrito factory boom 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 and then we freeze them or put them in the fridge and then i have a burrito every morning and i just microwave that it still tastes fresh if you as long as you only leave it you know a couple months or something like that um but generally i'll leave it only less than a couple weeks and i'm eating these these burritos so it's excellent can't recommend it enough. It's so easy. If you set aside an hour to two hours, you're going to get it done. You can make about 20 with uh, with uh, 18 eggs. I would say 18 or 24 eggs, but usually 18 to 20 eggs makes about 20 
burritos and half a tube of the sausage. And, um, and you can put a little bit of cheese in there if you like shredded cheese. You can just don't overdo it. Just a little bit of cheese when you roll it up in the, in the tortilla. All right. I love it. Let's, uh, let's, uh, let's end there. That, that's a great way to end this. This is a, I got a lot to do. I'm heading out to Reno uh, to play with Goldfinger. So it's a busy, busy week. And a bunch of other things are kind of happening. Like, all right, we need this. So I'm going to end there. We're going to get to more vo- voicemails probably next week, unless somebody comes and, and, and comes and does the podcast. But we are going to have Danny Attack on the podcast. He's the singer of Knives Florida. Uh, but we haven't scheduled it yet, so um, you know that's that's kind of up to me. But he reached out, and uh, we're going to do that. So I'm looking forward to that conversation and, and to hear a little bit more about what Knives is up to and what he's been up to. All right, you guys, thank you. Thanks to Bob McKnight for producing and editing and doing all he does for the podcast. I appreciate it. Um, I can't wait to hear hear more from you guys. If you want to. If you don't want to call in, you don't have to, of course. You can write on the message, you know, write a message on the on the Facebook group. Start a conversation about a topic there. That'd be awesome. Uh, that's the Mike Herrera Facebook group on Facebook. So uh, if I, it's the Mike Herrera podcast Facebook group. Um, I don't know if there's a Mike Herrera Facebook group. I, I haven't started one, but somebody probably has. There's a lot of people named Mike Herrera in the world, so you never know. Anyway. Appreciate your time. Appreciate you. Thanks for listening to MXPX. Thanks for all the love. If you haven't already heard the new album, Find a Way Home, please add it to your libraries. Go check it out. We have all the variants at MXPX.com plus summer merch. Summer's not over, although fall is coming soon. Get ready for school. Get ready for football. Get ready for whatever it is you're doing. The time is now, people. Let's go. All right. Peace out. Peace out.